My name is Mike Preisner. Uh, I joined the Army, uh, left for basic training on my 18th birthday in June of 2001. I was assigned to the 10th Mountain Division, and in March of 2003, I was attached to the 173rd Airborne Brigade and deployed to northern Iraq. Um, so when I first joined the Army, uh, we were told that racism no longer existed in the military. Uh, a legacy of inequality and discrimination was suddenly washed away by something called the Equal Opportunity Program. Uh, we would sit through mandatory classes and every unit had this EO representative uh, to ensure that no elements of racism could resurface. Uh, and the Army seemed firmly dedicated to smashing any hint of racism. And then September 11th happened and I began to hear new words like towel head and camel jockey and the most disturbing, sand nigger. And these words did not initially come from my fellow soldiers, but from my superiors, my platoon sergeant, my company first sergeant, battalion commander. All the way up the chain of command, these terms, these viciously racist terms were suddenly acceptable. And I noticed that most, the most overt racism came from veterans of the first Gulf War. And those are the words they used when they were incinerating civilian convoys, those are the words they used when this government deliberately targets civilian infrastructure, bombing water supplies knowing that it would kill hundreds of thousands of children. Those are the words the American people used when they allowed this government to sanction Iraq. And this is something that many people forget, and we can't forget. <laughs> is that we've just learned that we've killed over a million Iraqis since this invasion, but we already killed a million Iraqis in the 90s through sanctions and bombings prior to this invasion. So the number truly is much higher. But when I got to Iraq in 2003, I, I learned a new word, and that word was Haji. Haji was the enemy. Haji was every Iraqi. He was not a person, a father, a teacher, or a worker. And it's important, we've heard this word a lot, uh, during Winter Soldier, but it's important to understand where this, this word came from. And to Muslims, the uh, uh, most important thing is, is to take a pilgrimage uh, to Mecca, it's the Hajj. And someone who has taken this pilgrimage is a Haji. And it's something that in traditional Islam is, is the highest calling in the religion. So we took the best thing for a Muslim and, and made it into the worst thing. But history did not start with us, and since the creation of this country, racism has been used to justify expansion and oppression. The Native Americans were called savages, the Africans were called all sorts of things to excuse slavery, and Vietnam veterans know of, of the multitude of words used to justify that imperialist war. So Haji was the word we used. It was the word we used on this particular mission I'm going to talk about. And we've heard a lot about different raids and kicking down the doors of people's houses and, and ransacking their houses. But this mission was, was different, a different kind of raid. Uh, I never got any explanation for these orders. We were only told that this, this group of houses, five or six houses, uh, were now property of the U.S. military. And we had to go in and make those families leave those houses. So we went to these houses and informed the families that those homes were no longer their homes. Uh, we provided them no alternative, nowhere to go, no compensation, uh, and they are very confused and very scared and, and did not know what to do and would not leave, so we had to remove them from those houses. Uh, one family in particular, a woman with two small girls, a very elderly man and, and two middle-aged men, um, we, we dragged them from their houses and, and threw them onto the street and arrested the men because they refused to leave, uh, arrested the old man, and sent them off to prison. And at that time, I, I didn't know what happened to people when we, we tied their hands behind their back and, and put a sandbag on their head. But uh, unfortunately, a, a few months later, I, I, I had to find out. I was, we were short interrogators, so I was assigned to, to work as an interrogator. And. Uh, I oversaw and participated in uh, hundreds of, of interrogations. One in particular I'm going to share with you is it was, it was a, a moment for me that, that, that really showed me the, the nature of, of this occupation. Um, this, this particular uh, detainee, um, when I was uh, sent to interrogate him, he was stripped down to his underwear, um, hands behind his back, and, and sandbag on his head. Uh, and I never actually saw this man's face. Um, 
my job was to take this metal folding chair and just smash it against the wall next to his head. He was, he was faced against the wall with his nose touching the wall. While a fellow soldier screamed the same question over and over again, no matter what his answer, my job was to slam the chair against his wall. Um, we did this until basically we got tired. And I was told to make sure he stood against the wall uh, for however long 